Hi guys. So if we talk about the case in Moscow, we should understand that we start with the day. The day it happened. And it happened exactly on 22nd of March. So if you know the history, you should probably uh, remember about World War Two, and uh, one of the biggest issues in the so-called territory, ex-territory of uh, Soviet Union was the massacre at Katyn, which happened exactly at 22nd of March. And so uh, what happened is that you can read here uh, on this page in Wikipedia, so it's mostly like uh, national site of memorial in, in current Republic of Belarus. So it commemorates particularly more than 600 burned villages. Yeah, so together with their inhabitants. So understand, so, so many villages. So it's uh, all this background here and so on. So it happened, it happened with help of uh, so-called collaborators and uh, if you read actually the the Russian page here uh, in Russian you can translate it in, in English so uh, the destruction of Hatin was an action of March 22nd 1943 carried by the punitive detachment 118th Sturm Men's Craft Battalion as and Special SS Battalion Dierlin Wenger. So, uh, out of re revenge for the murder of several German soldiers by surrounding partisans, in accordance with the principle of collective punishment. So, uh, 149 inhabitants, including 75 children, were burned alive or shot for possible assistance for village residents to these partisans. So I'm not sure how much uh, is the current death, uh, death uh, toll at the Krakow City Hall massacre, but it's closely to this, um, except that maybe there's not as much children uh, than it was before in Katyn. So uh, if you start reading about this page, you will be, the first line here is not to be confused with Katyn and Hatsun. So it's like Katyn is a village in Smolensk and Hatsun is the village in the Bronx region. So uh, remember this please, because that's, uh, That's where it goes, all this logic. So, okay, so we have the same day. Um, most of the victims in the Crocus City were most likely damaged uh, their health and killed by fire and smoke. So it's kind of related to that. And also, if you read about who was actually operating, you find out that... Um, well, we'll talk about that a little bit later. you find out interesting information also. So where's Hatin? Hatin is kind of here north to, to Minsk region. It's not even close to Russia, but Bransk and the second village uh, is somewhere about right here. Yeah, over here. So it's it's quite the road the terrorists took to escape. Uh, first, it was uh, reported that uh, they were escaping via a different village because uh, first report said it was the village of Tople, Pasolak Tople, uh, Tople, 
and here on this direction there's no Teople, there's Teople. And they actually were caught near here, near Hatsun. Okay. So if we go all the way back to um, the situation where they were caught, and it spells exactly like this Hatsun. So they were caught near Hatsun, and it goes with 33 in Chaldean. Okay. Uh, let's see what's uh, the next. Uh, Chopli, the Paseolog Chopli that was named before, uh, it's located somewhere into direction to Belarus. So, somewhere right here. Cannot find it. Let's see. Chopli. 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 Brands Coblist. As you can see, Chopli Brands Coblist is located uh, to the west from Brands, not to the south. And that's important because here to the south is the direct road to Ukraine. Here to the west is the road towards uh, Belarus. So if they were caught as was firstly reported in this Chopli, uh, then we could have checked it also Chopli, like this, like it's spelled here, Chopli. And we also get 33 in Pythagoras, as you can see. But in Russian, I would spell it like this, like Chopli, this way, so it doesn't really matter. You just change the uh, two letters here. Okay? So that's important because as soon as it all started, maybe an hour or less after everybody was starting to push it in the media, to force it in the media, where these guys were captured, they were misspelling this. Chopli to Chopli, and uh, so people who were Googling where it's located, they were saying they were not going to, to Ukraine, thank God, they were going to Belarus. But no, they were going to this direction, into direction of Pasolok Chopli, so it means like this way. So uh, the... Hatsun Memorial Complex also is located here. And you will understand why. Because it's pretty much the same event as it was in um, in, uh, in case of destruction of Hatsun. So, Memorial Complex here was opened in 1977. Uh to commemorate the, the victims of German fascism. So it was also a tragedy. It, it took place on October 25. October 25, we'll remember this day also for, for later. And uh, so this, the tragedy itself uh, is also notable. So they were massacred here. October 25, the entire population of the village, including residents of Brands, Karachev, and other settlements who were hiding here, were shot by German occupiers. The reason of such massacre was the murder of three German servicemen by the Red Army encirclement. Uh, so, uh, in, later in 1942, Germans burned Hatsun to the ground. Uh, in 2011, the Federal Military Archives in Freiburg in Germany handed over to Russia a report that spoke of 188 deaths, so also very, very, very initiative number. And now it's also populated, this village is populated by basically by eight people that are officially living there. Okay. 
and its telephone code also has inside 33. So not only the relation to Hatin and the date, also the same tragedy, the same type of tragedy, uh, shooting and burning and detainment of these guys, of these, uh, of these terrorists, I would say, all these attackers is also here near this village near uh, in the forest near the village why is that but why is this written near the village well uh here you can read about detainment and 2307 basically 1107 the camera road camera uh fi fixed the speed limit break by the renault symbol the car that we're using to escape uh, this was basically the car that they uh, parked near the crocus city before they start to shoot and so road police were chasing them around 10 minutes so they turned into direction of Pasolok Chopli Choplea here so this road here and probably somewhere in here they were uh, shot by the police so the the wheels were shot at and so they couldn't try uh, and you can see also one of the terrorists was, was detained the other ones escaped in the forest. So probably they went that direction. Uh, that's why they were captured near Hatsun. So uh, as you can see, second terrorist was detained around 3 a.m. 30 minutes. Also makes 33 here. As you can see. Um also the issue with left hand also the, uh, is not correct three left fingers make three and so on um maybe we should read another one yes we have a cr chronology here um 1950 at 1950 light colored renault symbol in which militants were stopped at the main entrance to the hall uh, and so they entered 2003 they started shooting uh, explode a grenade and molotov cocktail in the auditory and at 2013 they escaped but later uh the head of investigation committee uh reported that they were only 13 minutes inside i don't know how is that uh relate so also about interception at the 30 385 kilometer the terrorists turned off the highway towards the village of Topli. But we understand it's Choplaya also. Um, so uh, the overturn near the village of Hatsun also misspelled here. Hatsun is spelled like this Hatsun. Okay. So um, let's go later uh, further. I mean, Interception is okay. The car is okay. Let's go to uh, the the car itself of the terrorist car of the terrorists. Um, uh, 
Машина террористов. Окей, okay, many pictures of this car. And you can see the, the number is T668YM. And if you see, if you check, uh, if you check this here, let's see, where is the number? Well, let's just, let's just copy it and check it again. T668. Y Y M T six six eight Y M. As you can see, the car number gives us thirty three, just exactly as in the clip about the movie called Game, which, which uh, my friend Russian Vids is showing very often in his videos. Okay, so what else? What else? The car itself. The car itself. Uh, let's see. The car itself was black and white. As we know, black and white uh, gives us our famous relation to Masons. So whoever gave him the, this car... Uh, was was a funny guy let's continue uh so as you know riddle or rebus is a mystery which can be for sure solved okay and so if we like uh go back to the case with the airplane of euro airlines that was uh, going to Omsk and it was successfully landed in the field okay uh, so this guy is exactly 32 years old airplane pilot and so uh, as you can see the landing was successful but you might also check the number of the plane and it's RA, RA, let's see, 73805, 73805, you get also 33. And it's not a coincidence because, you know, the plane itself is A320, it's Airbus A320, and if you add a which is one both in pythagoras and Chaldean, uh, you might get uh, a one which can be added to 32 uh, which is like like this so a32 it's going like six if, if, if it's literally but actually if you add one to 32 it's 33 so that's the riddle what you can find in different media cases and as as my friend Russian V has been saying it's supposed to be these cases that are highly spotlighted by the media and for example if you follow this case you'll find out that this airplanes was belonging to Euro Airlines okay Euro air lines so you also get 33 and that's not the first case with these euro airlines where, where this uh, successful landing happened okay and by the way this case happened out of nowhere because uh, everybody who was especially saying that this is like messed up they're supposed to land in the uh in, in their destination point which was city of homes but he continued flying, so uh, who knows what was actually the reason. And uh, so after the case with evacuation of this airplane from the field, 
And there was also a media report that was saying that it needs exactly 330 meters to uh, fly away from this field to take off, you know, <laughs> 330 meters uh, long. And this field suddenly was quite enough. And so they were even just drawing it graphics on the field with 330 meters. Okay, and there's many things here that were also odd, very odd. So if you come back to Crocus, you find out that basically it's not Crocus City Hall. Basically, it's called Crocus City. Crocus City, okay. And it's spelled like this, Crocus City, because it's a group of buildings. It's not just a single building. And by the way, these four terrorists, four terrorists, four terrorists, these four terrorists with 77 in numerology were entering this Crocus City and with 33. Uh, and they were entering it uh, exactly in the middle of the building and went uh, to the left direction where the hall is located. And we all know what's hall in, in masonry, right? Sorry, my cat is going wild. Uh, so if you go to, for example, Lom London, it's having Freemasons Hall London, right? So Freemasons Hall, United Grand Lodge of England. And so it's not like uh, I'm making stuff up. Hall is always related as a place. But also it can be riddled to not like uh, hall, which is uh, the place, right? But it can be read as hall, okay? Like uh, what was actually made like this so you have a hole here okay the concert was supposed to be by the picnic band and as you can see the symbolism here is a bunch of people who are like you know big fans of them and all this uh, christian type of but actually anti-christian type of uh, propaganda on this you know this crocus city here also and you can see uh, all this uh, Masonic Satanism here. So one of these favorite songs of there, uh, which became uh, relevant to what happened, is called Nothing to Afraid, Nothing to be Afraid. And so they sing like, uh, don't be afraid, wash yourself with blood in the morning, and so on. So... This song is very interesting. The second song is 33 million views 15 years ago about uh, the kingdom of weird. So it's like, you know, supposed to be saying uh, weird murals, but, you know, no, no uh, prolongation of the title, just the kingdom of weird. And so we're you can find different uh, different interesting uh, interesting frames they all seen in this red brick uh, background also you can see people shooting uh, shooting people yeah over here you can see shooting people and then you can see somebody running in the forest as i've been saying about the forest near hatun where all these guys were captured also you can see the swat running and so on so also people running on fire uh, and so on so very interesting a very interesting video with 33 million views and the group itself also has a lot of uh, uh, Satanism, I would say, type of videos. Uh, you can Google. I wouldn't say it's good music. I'd say it's uh, something um, related to Satanism, of course. 
but it's uh, it's what it is. So I'm not making stuff up. There's a bunch of comments about that. So let's continue with picnic. Uh, if we can see, uh, it's the screenshot I was making when I was exchanging messages with one of my friends. So it shows like picnic concert Crocus City pick 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 con cert crocus city goes with 9/11 okay let's see and that's the continuation if we go further crocus city hall hall you get 919 which is inverted 66 there's so many things and information some of it is mixed up so the order might not be concerning uh, something that you want to be a fair order so this is some, some short of clips here uh, here also interesting the hotline is 77 here 1717 hotline for calling also we see here what we see here we see here that uh, the witness saying that she, they went through bathroom downstairs and so on so we have a lot of clips here but in the end she has like w this weird smile saying that thank god everything was okay people were adequate so what does she mean adequate and why why she is so uh she's so interesting also one of these two shooters had this picture on the internet as you can see oh we know what left eye means so that's a hidden message also from one who did this and from one who did the, the thing with the ear because one of them ate his ear and so on so also very related case with Zim Zimnia Vishnia, uh, also one Russian mall which was burning with people inside also has relation to 77. And the more I think about 77, it's meaning it's like 33 plus, plus 44. So it's like being a part of the club plus the corruption in, in, the, in, the, in the world, in the government, whatever. So very related um, about this picnic. So plenty of hidden messages here. And people are saying like Ministry of Science and Symbols, hidden sense. If we have one, we should be interested in the picnic band. So. And also another uh, screenshot. Also, you see. Uh, the the post somebody made in social media like the the picnic band is the Zionists and Satan's the well-known Satan's in Russia and Zionists in Russia and hashtag picnic hashtag Illuminati's hashtag adrenochrome I don't want to read this article I think you can find it by yourself um, you can see the address here just press it in and that's okay uh, maybe you can read some for you and also this screenshot uh, has a, a, a picture here which called dances with satan picnic vitali mucha and album of the group total twisted tomatoes what is significant here is as you can see total twisted tomatoes probably spelled the wrong way you should be having es and so on so 
uh, there's a video clip here also on the internet. You can find it, and it's posted as TTT because I think the 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 um, the rebus here, the riddle here, is uh, actually TTT. They're what they were actually. Uh, this group is trying to show us that they have relation to TTT also on this uh, image of their total twisted tomatoes and basically because you don't get anything from total twisted tomatoes if you if you search in numerology but if you have the ttt ttt you will get either 6 or 12 why is that because uh like just like in with fox fox uh, like famous channel you get nothing 18 and 20 not very significant right but if you know that Fox is 666, that, that is, you know, that is more significant, okay? When you have something like this, 666, 666, yes? So you get this devil's number or whatever you, you get. So the same with TTT, uh, because in one Pythagoras numerology is triple two, and in Chaldean numerology is triple four, triple four. So basically, if you get two, 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 you don't have anything. Like you can get only six in sum and so on. So that's not what we want to take a look at. We want to take a look at four, 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 because if we call this video 44 issue, we might get something with this. And yes, we get something because it's basically 444 right that's spelled correct way i have to double check in this dictionary so i won't be um won't be mistaken and we get a 911 upside down and another 99 so it's related uh related to picnic as you can see picnic is all around although they're just participant of this song song is uh Son is called Dance with Satan. And we have a little video also here, uh, like people running in a prison. Then we have yeah, the guy in orange short. Uh, don't forget that orange, orange is also 33. So Let's go to the clip itself. So, also, we have a guy here in the background who's stabbing everybody with a knife. So maybe also related to to the um, to the case in Crocus City because one of the terrorists was also cutting throats and trying to cut heads and so on. So very uh, very significant. Uh, you also have cops here because one of these, uh, the ones he cut was a, a security one without any arms. So uh, basically the clip is very satanic. Uh, so there's no doubt you have a relation here. And in, in the end of the clip, a guy gets burned by the electric chair. So basically you can also relate this to what these four terrorists will eventually get. They might get a lifetime sentence or maybe even uh, lose their lives. Although Russia doesn't have it as a penalty, some say that these four terrorists could go to um, Belarus to get in trial because Belarus have has it. And also, in, in the end, you, you get this 666 here. As you can see, the electric electricity is moving. You get 666 when it all stops. Um, so there's no doubt this group has a relation uh, to Satanism, both with Picnic and without them. And uh, Total Twisted Tomatoes is just another riddle. As it is, 
the ears that had been cut, the, one of the terrorists lost his ear, I would say, but basically it was cut. So maybe because of uh, the Judaic, Judaic uh, holiday, uh, Purim, 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 yeah. So, and some even think that the, the sense, the symbolism is related to these days. One of the terrorists uh, ate his own ear, and it's been saying that the Mujahids get to heavens after they die, and they get pulled by Allah, and so probably that's why they cut his ear, not because of Purim. But still, it's significant because uh, these cookies, the famous cookies of Purim, called the ears of Amman. And so the story is all about uh, also pulling here that Ukraine could be behind it. And the Ukraine was basically uh, managed by Victoria Nuland. She is, uh, you know, related and also gave away cookies. But she was also saying that you should expect something from Ukraine. So Putin will get his surprises and so on. Uh, before her resignation, so probably she is somehow involved in managing because she arrived to Ukraine quite before this situation happened. And as you can see, she was in office till March 22nd, exactly the day the operation um, could be, you know, managed even by her, okay? So basically on October, uh, on February 22nd, a month prior to uh, the case in Moscow in Krakow City, she was uh, a speaker on CSIS conference, Center for Strategy and International Studies. And she had her recap here on what was going on in Ukraine. So uh, we might as well listen to her and around uh, she has basically a lot of miscalculations. She's like, let's, let's uh, listen to her. I hope these guys won't be sending a ban for me for this. Very good to be here with you at CSIS, and thanks to CSIS for decades of incisive research and recommendations for policymakers. I have been a beneficiary myself over many decades, and thanks to everybody who is joining us both in person and virtually. Well, as Max made clear, we all remember where we were two years ago in the months and days and hours leading up to Putin's February 24, 2022 full-scale invasion of Ukraine. Check her brooch here. As you can see, snakes. So quite, quite a surprise, right? U.S. intelligence and indeed CSIS's own reports had been warning for months about Putin's massive war plan and the terrible toll that could await Ukraine. Week after week in the winter of... 21 and 22, we watched the Russian military take up positions on three sides of Ukraine. So she's like saying that they have all the intelligence, including this CSIS also had. So why didn't nobody was evacuating from Ukraine? It's the question that we asked Zelensky and everybody in Ukraine asked Zelensky, why didn't you tell the people to evacuate? Because you waited for this panic to happen, all these cases with, uh, you know, unnecessary victims. Uh, during these first days, first weeks, when they were shooting their own people just for being uh, suspected as a Russian um, collaborators or spies or uh, guidance uh, persons who were just guiding the missiles to some, you know, build, hit the buildings and so on. So if you knew everything, why didn't you tell the people? Why did you see all this evacuation, you know, mass when people were standing in huge numbers at the stations and so on when the cars were uh, searched by territorial forces who were seeking for spies and some people were shot so why is that if you knew everything the us as you'll remember offered negotiations to try to avert russia's planned invasion but those negotiations sputtered very quickly because putin had already made up his mind yet at that time many still hoped that the troop movements were just a pressure tactic even some Ukrainians believe that. But many of us feared that if Putin did order his troops in, Russia's massive military could roll over Kiev within a week, decapitate Ukraine's democratic government, and install puppets of Moscow. Yeah, but, but in fact, we all remember 
how she did install puppets uh, in Kiev when she was deciding who was going to be prime minister. And there's a hidden, uh, not hidden, but uh, whistleblowers or maybe a, a tape uh, who was presented to Euro News and other media outlets. So that would be great, I think, to help glue this thing and have the UN help glue it. And, you know, f*** the EU. No, exactly. And I think we've got to do something to make it stick together because you can be pretty sure that if it does, if it does start to gain altitude, the Russians will be working behind the scenes to try to torpedo it. The video has a transcript in Russian. The U.S. State Department said it didn't know where the recording came from. So basically, uh, she was discussing with the ambassador of who to put the uh, in, in, in charge. So, and that guy actually got his position. That was Arseniy Yatsenyuk, and he got his prime minister position. You can Google, you can find it. It's, it's uh, everybody knows that's real situation. Okay. So. But that did not happen. Because, Instead, you, because you guys did it first, yes. <laughs> Putin got Newton's third law, an equal and opposite reaction to everything he hoped to gain. Instead of fleeing, President Zelensky led. Instead of capitulating, Ukrainians fought. Yeah, but Israeli Prime Minister actually said that Zelensky called him after he was talking to Putin and Putin gave his own security, uh, security, I would say, advice for Zelensky not to be afraid because nobody's going to be targeting him. And after that, Zelensky appeared as a national leader. First couple of days, he was hiding in the basement and, and so on, so in the bunker. And only after Israeli Prime Minister guaranteed him that he's not going to be targeted, he started to be a hero. And so bravely. Instead of fracturing, the West united. And instead of shrinking, NATO grew. The U.S. rallied the world to Ukraine's defense in those early hours, days, and weeks. And we've kept that global coalition of more than 50 nations united for these two years, standing strongly with Ukraine. So basically she's saying 50 countries support Ukraine uh, against Russia. To date, as you know, the U.S. has provided $75 billion in security, economic, and humanitarian assistance. But Europe and our global partners have provided even more, $107 billion in addition to hosting 4.5 million Ukrainian refugees in countries across Europe. And the EU has just pledged an additional $54 billion for Ukraine. So it's more than $200 billion uh, funds to Ukraine, $200 billion. Today, NATO is stronger, larger, and better resourced. Finland has joined our defensive alliance and will welcome Sweden very soon. Russia is globally isolated. Over 140 nations voted four times in the UN General Assembly to condemn Putin's brutal invasion. And now Putin is reliant on countries like Iran and North Korea for weapons, while he drives his country deeper and deeper into the economic and security arms of China. Global sanctions, the oil price cap, the export controls that we've put in place have weakened Russia's war machine. And these restrictions will get significantly tighter in the coming days as we and our partners announce massive new sanctions packages designed, among other things, to strangle Russia's effort at sanctions evasion. In less than two years... So is Russia evading sanctions or not? And are you successful actually or not? Everybody knows you are not successful. Look at the reports. And I'm, I, I can say that all these sanctions actually worked for a couple of months and then it started to turn it back around. Now Europeans buying more expensive natural gas uh, from the United States instead of, you know, buying a cheaper one, which they were, you know, uh, buying from Russia. And so, but Russia doesn't have any problems with exports in oil. Some numbers show that they even have some increase. So I don't know what type of sanctions she's talking about if she's talking uh, about evasion of sanctions by Russia. And she's doing something else to, you know, prevent the evasion of sanctions. Europe broke its dependency on Russian oil, and the U.S. doubled uh, liquidified natural gas exports across the Atlantic, helping European partners reduce their dependence on Russian gas. Yeah, meaning selling them for, for a higher price. From 40% of total consumption to just 13% today. And despite all the immense challenges from Putin's vicious war machine, Ukraine has survived. So despite Putin's... No, it's because... Uh, of this support you just mentioned, this 200 billion. Ukraine has retaken more than 50% of the territory seized by Putin's forces at the beginning of the invasion. 
It has pushed Russia's Black Sea fleet out of Sevastopol and off Ukraine's coast, allowing Ukraine to restore grain exports to pre-war levels and helping to feed the world once again. Again, feed the world. All this information about hunger and all this uh, feeding the world is just, you know, the preparation for the future, future case about the, the, the hunger games that they are promoting here. And remarkably, Ukraine's economy grew by 5% last year, albeit from a pretty low war-torn base. And in case Americans are still asking themselves if all of this is worth it for us, let's remember, without sending a single U.S. soldier into combat and investing less than one-tenth of one year's defense budget of the... Uh, so she's like, you know, saying one-tenth... ...asking themselves if all of this is worth it for us, let's remember, without sending a single U.S. soldier into combat and investing less than one-tenth of one year's defense budget of the United States, we have helped Ukraine destroy 50% of Russia's ground combat power. 50%. So 50 countries, 50%, uh, less than one-tenth. She just said that 200 billion or even more money was given to Ukraine. Is it one-tenth of the budget? Actually, not. And 20% of its vaunted Black Sea fleet. Ukraine has taken off the battlefield 21 naval ships, 102 Russian aircraft, and 2,700 Russian tanks. By every 2,700 Russian tanks. How does she know the number? Nobody knows the number. Each and every side is having a propaganda war and telling numerous numbers. And none of these numbers actually show up to be true because only the confirmed devastation of or you know burning of a tank or whatever hidden the tank can be counted but no those both sides of the conflict each and every time tell us different numbers so wh what are the real numbers no one knows but victoria nuland knows <laughs> every measure ukraine's bravery and strength its resilience has made the united states safer too yeah how is that how is that because eh, Look at these politicians that are saying the United States is not safe anymore because, you know, thousands of thousands of migrants are stepping in each and every day. So, I mean, is it actually safe? Write me in the comments, guys, who live in the United States. Is it becoming more safe because of this support to Ukraine? More broadly, our continued support for Ukraine tells tyrants and autocrats wherever they are that we will not stand by while the UN Charter is torn to shreds that we will defend the rights of free people to determine their own future and to protect their sovereignty and territorial integrity. Yeah, just read the comments. This woman is evil. 284 likes. Nuland is guilty of hundreds of thousands of lives lost in this useless war. This woman is pure evil. The money goes right back to the US economy. This woman is an evil monster. She is an evil per personified. Nuland is evil. It's not comments by me, it's comments by the people. Just check, take a look. It's ridiculous. And that the world's democracies will defend the values and principles that keep us safe and strong. But on, Ukraine, but on Ukraine's front lines, unless and until the U.S. joins Europe in passing our supplemental funding request, the situation will remain dire. Artillerymen today are fighting with only 10 to 20 155 millimeter shells per day to defend. Oh, now you have problems. You're talk she's talking about the problems that she has in Ukraine. And themselves. Ukraine, as we saw in the news, has been forced to withdraw from Avdeyevka. Kharkiv, oh. one of Ukraine's proudest eastern city, a Russian speaking city, mm -hmm. is bombarded daily in an effort to disable it. And so there's a problem. Despite all this uh, support that sh and big work that she's working on, constantly from 2014 or even prior to that nothing really works ukraine's economy is still fragile with almost 100 percent of tax revenues going to defense now vladimir putin in addition to now to planning anti-satellite weapons in space and bearing responsibility for the death of his most popular opponent alexei navalny thinks he can wait ukraine out and he thinks he can wait out all of us we need to prove him wrong why why is she uh, equalizing uh ukraine and all of us meaning all the west all the us i don't know what she's talking about all the western el elites with the 60 billion dollar supplemental that the administration has requested of congress we can ensure that ukraine not only survives but she thrives so now she's a crybaby she's talking about the 60 billion congress is not you know sending to ukraine but she's like promoting this idea 
but no one is proving it anymore. With this support in 2024, we can help ensure Ukraine can continue to fight, to build, to recover, and to reform. With this money, Ukraine will be able to fight back in the East, but it will also be able to accelerate the asymmetric warfare that has been most effective on the battle. Asym- asymmetric warfare. Battlefield. And as I said in Kyiv three weeks ago, this supplemental funding will ensure Putin faces some nasty surprises on the battlefield this year. So exactly the month before it happened, uh, and it happened exactly at the day of her res- resignation, resignation, she sends a message of asymmetric warfare and uh, nasty surprises. I'm not even talking about the the, the attempts of uh, storming the Russian border of uh, Belgorod, Bransk and Kursk region that was performed in the first days of March. I'm not even saying about the 7th of uh, March when the U.S. Embassy released the notice that you're supposed to be aware of terrorist attacks and not go into the concert halls. And I'm not even saying anything about that. Nuland was born in 1961 to Sharon B. Nuland, a surgeon born to Eastern European Jewish immigrants from Bessarabia, the part of the Soviet Union, with the last name Nudelman, and a Christian British native mother, Rona McCain, Nee Gustan. She graduated from College Rosemary Hall in 1971. So... She is born half Russian Jewish, half uh, Christian British, <laughs> I would say. And, and her last name is supposed to be Nudelman, right? Not N- Newland. She's supposed to be Nudelman. Let's check Nudelman. And you can find that she is also related to the club. Uh, not, not a big surprise, right? So she, isn't that a portrait of the manager of all this information campaign that we see. So that's an interesting fact. I'm not even saying uh, about her own uh, roots with the possible celebration of this Jewish holiday because she is Jewish by herself. But who knows? Who knows? If that's related, that's related. But uh, we could, we can only guess we can only guess because we don't have any information okay other ones saying that also there's some massage relation to this because uh, because of uh, this special information drop that was performed by the site intelligence group and i was checking on that also and I found out very interesting case that the same intelligence group was also dropping out, uploading videos from um, different other cases. And so if you Google this intelligence group is uh, related uh, to Rita Katz, who was uh, born in southern Iraq in 1963 to a wealthy Iraqi Jewish family. After a six-day war, she was uh, her father was arrested of charges of spying for Israel. Family's property was confiscated by the state and the rest of family was put under house arrest in a stone hut. The following year, after having been tortured, Kat's father was convicted and executed in a public canyon in the central square of Baghdad, witnessed by more than a half of millions of Iraqis. Kat's mother managed to escape with her three children to Iran, from where they made their way to Israel. The family settled in the seaside town of Bat Yam, while in Israel, Kat served in the Israel Defense Forces and studied politics, history, and Middle Eastern studies at Tel Aviv University. But also, her name is also a riddle because Rita is basically not the full name because the full name is Margarita, Margaret. Uh, And so let's check it. Margarita Cats. 
and we'll get also 11 and a 33. So Margarita Katz or Rita Katz, uh, she was uh, search for Institute International Terrorist Entities Institute site, actually site director, site institute director. <laughs> yeah. So let's uh, uh, also some Turkish magazine saying she's Mossad agent. Um, yeah. Enterprise site intelligence into something. As you can see, site intelligence enterprise group. So I checked it uh, this time. Enterprise also three, three ones here. Let's see. IG intelligence group enterprise is 44 search international something all this you know all these words here together is 121 121 is actually also related to baltimore bridge in these videos uh, you can find this uh, in uh, they live truth channel and my comments also there and margarita cuts is 33. resource uh that's another thing that happened uh russian resource miso is 33 resource p4 is how they call it also 33 as you can see resource p number four so i definitely had hit this also resource p number four is 88 also significant and here's the list of this uh rita cuts case Somebody was actually uh, taking a look at her. She is used as all these folks as a source of um, terrorist videos that have been posting online. Next one is uh, Agalarov, the guy who owns the Crocus City, the guy who's owner of Crocus Group, Russian holding. Okay, his name spells exactly like this in Azerbaijani, and we get a 66. So maybe his involvement is kind of obvious because people blame him for, for bad security for many other issues that happened inside the building with, with the locked doors and uh, bad smoke, uh, anti-smoke systems, ventilations and so on, that the building was burning very fast. But, you know we should make the conclusions if that scripted well enough by somebody uh, i don't think he had any chance to counteract uh, and you know has to be blamed for but interesting thing that he is azerbaijani that's the file number so we have a file uh, of uh, that same terrorist that was detained in the forest uh, that he was visiting this Crocus City at, as you can see, 7.03.24. So meaning 7th of March, exactly when uh, U.S. Embassy and British Embassy released the warning note about supposed terrorist attack in some concert halls. Uh, so you can you have see the file name here. And I've checked this file name. Uh, I've checked his file name and I got this, let's see, 102D3400DSC45. DSC 42D3400DSC0045. So I've checked it and you can see, I didn't put double zero here, but doesn't mean anyway, uh, we get 33. Okay, I also checked the the exact time, exact time. As you can see, seven zero three eighteen fifty one seventeen without the year, without the year, and you get uh, you got you get this 
seven on three, eighteen, fifty one, seventeen. Also S here. Eighteen fifty one seventeen. So seven oh three. And also uh, very remarkable that this photograph gets a double thirty. Uh, well, we should get double because it's only numbers here. Uh, okay, the previous one uh, has D's here, S's and C's. That's why you have different Pythagoras and Chaldean. But this is only number, and it gets this thirty-three twice. So I don't know if this photograph. Uh, photo reporter who was there supposedly taking pictures of the visitors that day. I don't know if he's related to this attack somehow, but he is surely into the, made his way into the script. Okay. So also the Tajikistan president who was firstly denying that Tajik citizens were involved in this terror attack. Then somebody came up that he is, you know, sorry for and sending his condolences to the victims and so on. And his last name is Rahman. Okay. Uh, also, another guy who was promoting uh, different information. It's the President Rahman. That's the President Rahman. Uh, as you can see here. Uh, again, returning to picnic uh, video clip. Karalevstvo Krivih, meaning, uh, as you know, I had a video with Kor, Kar, Kar, all these relations to different letters, and it's so programming us, uh, exactly like Crocus also, is all these CR, KR sounds, which are related to crows and crowns and all this stuff, so crazy, crime, you know, karma, all this stuff. So, so another guy with core car, Karnilov, also putting out the uh, the lyrics from Picnic uh, onto his vo wall and saying that he is uh, sending condolences and so on. So, reposting something. I, I've been telling you that uh, Picnic has several uh, lyrics in his in his videos that is, you know, related, somehow related to this. So this Kornilov also guy uh, that has been checked by me and uh, we have 3344 on him. 39, 39. Polish military said that uh, in the night of 24th of March, uh, the air space of their country, Russian missile, uh, wind missile um, that was sent by the Russian airplanes, intervened the Polish border and uh, was there for 39 seconds. Okay. And so I also checked this. Uh, 39 seconds as 39 being also 33. Uh, ISIS terror in Moscow is what Rita Katz was saying that it's all in the hands of ISIS. As you can see, ISIS terror in Moscow is also very significant. Uh, this guy, Yakov Kedmi, also s blaming uh, with the Ukrainian and uh, uh, British roots of this uh, case, so might as well take a look who is uh, Yakov Kedmi. He was a Soviet intelligence officer, and then he emigrated to Israel, became head of um, Israel uh, intelligence, one of the Israel intelligence. So he is well known expert, I would say, in Russian uh, media field. Uh, and so he was talking about Zelensky as uh, being a part of that and comparing him to Gary Kasparov, uh, Russian opposition. And I also checked Gary's uh, name as it spells. Uh, G. Kasparov also gets 33 because in Russian and I think in, in, England, in England and anywhere you can put the first letter of the name and then 
the, the last name. Uh, also, 95th quartile is um, basically Zelensky group that he was an entrepreneur. Uh, he was making concerts. He has a very famous 95 Quarto group, which is uh, basically from his uh, buddies, from his youth. And so everybody right now who is governing Ukraine is somehow related or was a partner of this group. And so also 33, Volodymyr Zelensky, uh, one of the name, one of the ways to spell this also gives us 66. Uh, Vladimir Alexandrovich Zelensky gives us 121. That's another way to spell his name. Uh, it's IMDB, which is the movie site, because he was also an actor. Uh, you have his personal details and alternative names. Okay. Volodymyr Zelensky. Okay. So what does this make? 39 seconds here. I sister in Moscow, Yakov Kedmi, Gary, Gary Kasparov, 95 quarto, Vladimir Zelensky, Vladimir Alexandrovich Zelensky, W. Zelensky. He will get the uh, his last name and the spelling. 33. Uh, January 25 is his birthday. Uh, Zelensky is the only guy who said that Putin basically made this terrorist attack by himself, but, you know, didn't provide any evidence of that. Although, a couple of days before, let's see, a couple of days before that, uh, terrorists also 33 for terrorists 77 uh Zelensky itself is a chemical um chemical element selen so it's also spells like this s e so we get six and eight uh one of the terrorists name one of these uh his bodies of the terrorists who gave him a, a car with uh, which they were using also has a last name of 33 uh, another one another terrorist full name dilavar israelovich islamov also 88 uh, 40 suspects detained in turkey after putin called and gave all these details to turkey and by the way the the uh the turkey the Turkey also could be related because um, Azerbaijan, Turkey, it's all pretty much uh, the place where all the supporters of Ukrainian war are because they, they give uh, Ukraine weapons, they give um, troops, which so-called Baskurt Grey Wolves, this is the emblem of Baskurt Grey Wolves, you know, so could be also related because who would else be, um, who would else be hiring Tajikis? Tajikis are also Iranians, basically, because Tajiki are Persians, and so using Tajikis uh, to create this enormous wave of anti-migrant uh, tensions in Russia, because we have a lot of Tajikis in Russia as migrants so that's what they were thinking about basically because iran would not support if russians would pressure tajikis after this terrorist attack blaming everybody so that's probably why rahman president of uh, tajikistan was firstly denying everything because he knew something was uh, already messed up okay another one 88 information the concerning uh what was going on th these days and concerning who could be blamed so i checked this 
Shab's defense minister because he's not the minister. I was wrong. So I got this 88, but basically we calling him defense minister, but he's secretary of defense. He's not minister. So if you put secretary of state for defense, you get 911 <laughs> or 11 here. So not very good for him anyway. Um, let's see. 13 minutes is what how, how much time uh, Russian detective agency said that the, they were inside the building. It's what it took them to step in the building and step out of the building. 13 minutes, including shooting uh, and burning, burning the, uh, the concert hall. So, okay, uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Secretary of State for Defense, great chaps. Why I think that he's also related to this case? Because he didn't go to Ukraine. So he canceled his visit. Look, it's March 16. So it's already after, after the so-called warning. US, uh, UK Defense Secretary cancels visit to Ukraine. March 17, March 16. So... Basically, it's 10 days after uh, they sent a message to embassies, both UK and US embassies, right? And so that's a strange behavior by Grant Shapps, who was trying to go to Ukraine, but didn't go. Okay, uh, why is so suspicious? Well, let's take a look for Grant Shapps. He is a uh, he was preceded by Ben Wallace, who also has a name of Robert Ben Lovan Wallace, and we know Robert is 33. So we're supposed to understand if he is a part of this club, and exactly we can see it's british and ukrainian flags uh, you can have to watch my video about coronation symbolism to understand what i'm talking about but basically he is uh, related to saying yes i'm in this club of supporters of ukraine and therefore the trident uh, roots of his career are pretty much understandable here because look at his service he was serving under Cameron who is currently being put in place as a foreign minister of uh, Great Britain he was a prime minister now he's a foreign minister so uh, and exactly uh, everybody needed somebody to be in that club and he is from that club of uh, David Cameron Cameron is 33 so I'm not saying anything I'm just saying what I think okay um, so let's see what am I uh, supposed to prove here I'm supposed to prove that he is part of this club and they're using him and probably supposed to set him up for something and he uh, found this information very serious and he didn't go to ukraine well something happened in ukraine prior to that because uh, there was a shelling case where zelensky and greek prime minister almost got into with the missile strike near them so we might as well uh, think that uh, he knew uh, he knew that he was in a mess, and he's supposed to be saving his butt because he was thinking maybe something went wrong in Russia, and uh, Russians know that he is in charge of all this operation. Why is that? Because he was set up to be. He was set up to be because um, he got us in his office from August. So probably knew what's going on with this case and he probably was involved in participation okay 
And we know that British have a good, very good intelligence network in Central Asia, which Tajikistan is uh, related to. And we know British operate freely in Turkey. And so prepared, Putin was calling Erdogan several days after this attack and 40 terrorists were detained immediately the next day. So this network of British was working in Turkey and was sending different persons from different countries from Central Asia, including those who were uh, practicing uh, the terrorism in Turkey, okay, prior to this attack. And these people were not chosen for uh, just for, just like that. They were chosen as a good professionals. 13 minutes to do all this job is just a SWAT is how the SWAT works very fast. So, and I think British are involved in this, in this training. He knew something was going on. That's why he didn't go to Ukraine because he was thinking about retaliation. That is possible that Russians could operate fast as they used to do in the Soviet times. Okay. And that's why it's uh, orchestrated this way for him to be showing up and all these false. Uh, false lines of uh, blaming, firstly, ISIS, and uh, secondly, Mossad and Jewish, uh, you know, Zionists or whatever, all this false flag operation that he was performing. This is just a style of British intelligence, British intelligence. So I think he might as well be he might as well be informed of that attack and he might as well uh, knew that uh, something could be possibly happening and why he is in this club you'd say because his name is not very goodly uh, very good in proving that he is actually let's check take a look what he was doing in his early life okay so he was uh, studying in this Manchester Metropolitan Museum, MMU. Uh, by the way, the look at this emblem, MMU. They have a fire and a checkboard here. So, uh, Bomberos, Bomberos University of Manchester, I would say. Uh, take a look at my videos about Crow Crown and Bradbury. You'll find that this is all related. Uh, he was uh, a national president of a Jewish youth organization, so he is basically Jewish. In eighteen, in nineteen eighty nine, he was involved in a car crash in Kansas. Well, I was thinking that's drawn my attention because car crash is double C, C C thirty three here, and supposed to find another thirty three here, that left him in coma for a week. Okay, so we might as well check this because. This is very suspicious. Let's see. A week, comma for a week also can be said a week, comma week. Okay. And we find also 33 here. So I think this guy is involved in this club. Okay, let's take a look next what he was doing. Um, Shap started his working life as a photocopier sales representative, uh, founded a company, design, print, website creation, marketing businesses, London. Oh, very good defense secretary. Based on collapsed printing business he purchased from the receiver. Collapse. Collapse. We've already been talking here today about bridge collapse. And, you know we can find collapse in his career also and because of the collapsed printing business he purchased from the receiver he stepped down as a director but remained the majority shareholder Shep's founded a web publishing business how to corp limited with his wife while she was recovering from cancer the company marketed businesses publications and software the existence of at least three people who allegedly provided testimonials for the company has been questioned. <laughs> so already some certain 
uncertainty here. Shab stood down as a director in July 2008. His wife remained as a director until the company was dissolved in 2014. In September 2012, Google blacklisted 19 of Shab's business website for violating rules on copyright infringements re related to the web scraping based traffic pay master software sold by them. Shab's web marketing business 2020 challenge publication and also drew criticism. It cost $497 and promised customers earning of 20,000 in 20 days. Upon a purchase, the toolkit was revealed to be an ebook advising the user to create their own toolkit and recruit 100 joint venture partners to resell it for a share of the profits. <laughs> what a business. <laughs> Sheps used the names Michael Green, Karine Stuckhill, and Sebastian Fox. We already talked about Fox today. It's triple six here. Michael also, you know, it's 33. So, and uh, what else here? C and S both th threes also. So um, interesting, right? Using the different names, right? Uh, he denied having used a pseudonym after entering parliament and in 2014 threatened legal action against a constituent who had stated on Facebook that he had. In February 2015, he told LBC Radio, I don't have a second job and I have never had a second job while being M an MP. End of story. In March 2015, Shep said he had made an error in his interview with LBC and was mistaken over the dates of his outside employment. He said he had over firmly denied having a second job and Guess what? David Cameron defended Shab, saying he had made a mistake and it was time to move on. <laughs> so let's wrap it up. So I think it's Nuland and Shabs who were actually uh, managing from US and UK all this case and uh, probably Rita Katz as a uh, false flag uh, footage provider also blaming it all on ISIS, which was actually ISIS, not the ISIS itself, it's like ISIS-K, which is was anti-Taliban movement in Afghanistan. And it's very, was very fast until something happened in Afghanistan also in like less than two or three days, another terrorist attack, uh, which ISIS-K created to verify that the Moscow attack was also ISIS-K. But let's listen to this clip. Uh, Secretary Toria, I just want to remind you that she, uh, last month she was in Kiev and she made a statement saying that 2024 will bring certain solid successes uh, on the battlefield. And she said, I'm quoting, Putin is going to get some nice surprises on the battlefield. Do you share that sentiment? Uh, I do. Uh, I do. We believe that Ukraine um, has a plan that they can execute to achieve victories on the battlefield. We've seen them uh, making vic uh, having victories on the battlefield most recently in the Black Sea, where in the last 24 hours they sunk another Russian ship. Um, so we do believe that they have some surprises in store. We look forward to seeing the results.